Hi, my name is Renee Christine, and this is a tutorial on how to make your own geode vulva painting. I was inspired to make this tutorial because so many of you wanted to replicate my paintings, so I wanted to make an easy and affordable way for you guys to do that. If you'd like to purchase one of the painting kits that go along with this tutorial, you can get them on my Etsy, and I'll have that linked in the description below. And if you just want to use your own art supplies, I'll list everything that I use with these paintings in the description below and where you can get them too. I also sell just the glass pieces and adhesive separately, so that's another affordable option if you don't want to purchase the entire kit. Alright, so let's get started. Before you begin the painting, please make sure that you've read through the instructions that came with your painting kit, because there are some important warnings in it about the gold metallic paint that we will be using and some other helpful information. Besides your paint kit, the other supplies that you'll need are some paper towels and a cup of water. And this is optional, but if you have a hair dryer on hand, this can help speed up drying time between layers. So in your painting kit, you should have a variety of glass jars that are numbered at the bottom, a small black container that has the gold metallic paint, two bags of glass pieces, four paint brushes, and one paint pen. And then attached to the bottom of your paint kit box is a piece of palette paper, so you can use that as your palette board if you'd like. The smallest flat brush is only used for the gold metallic paint, so you can go ahead and set that aside for now. All of the color schemes generally follow the same pattern. There will be some variations, of course, and I'll just make note of that as we go along. I will mention that the orange and pink color scheme probably has the most differences out of all of the paintings. So if you're painting that color scheme, I'll make sure to add your specific directions at the end of each step. So just like wait a second before you start each section. All right, enough talking, let's get started. So we're gonna start off by using the smaller flat brush and adding a little scoop of paint colors one and two to your palette. And if you're doing the orange and pink painting, you're gonna be adding paint colors one, two, four, and five. And throughout this painting, Whenever you're dipping into your white paint jar, just make sure that your paintbrush is really clean. That way you're not accidentally getting other colors mixed into your white. Because you want to make sure you have clean white paint for at the end in case you need to touch up any parts of your painting, like the outside of your canvas or whatever. Um, so just keep that in mind. Alright, so starting off, we're going to use paint color number one, and we're going to create a wiggly oval shape and we're using the same paintbrush that we've already been using. So just make sure your paintbrush is a bit damp before you add some of the color to it and that'll help it go on a lot more smoothly. Next, we're going to mark two spots in the center, one towards the top and one towards the bottom. And if you're doing the orange and pink painting, you're now going to switch to the pink color to do this part. An easy way to measure this is with your fingers. So approximately four fingers from the top of your shape and four fingers from the bottom. And next, we're simply going to paint a line and connect the two spots. Then at the top of the line, make sort of like a sideways oval shape. This is where the clitoris is going to go. Next, we're going to outline where the labia goes. For this part, you want to make sure that your paintbrush is turned to the side so that you're using the thinner side of your brush to draw these lines. So starting from the top of your oval shape, Draw a sort of wiggly, kind of butterfly looking shape all the way around. And of course, please feel free to customize this part however you like. And also, don't worry too much about getting the shape of the labia exactly how you want it to be. This is just like a rough outline, and we're going to have plenty of time to go back and touch up all the different shapes and everything. Next, we're going to outline where the clitoral hood goes. 
So starting from the top of your geode shape, we're going to draw two lines coming down and connecting with the top of the labia. And as you can see, the lines kind of come outward a little bit as we get closer to the labia. Once you're finished with that, we're going to move on to a new section. So now we're going to switch to the larger paintbrush, except for orange and pink people. You guys can just hang on to the same brush that you've been using. For everyone else, we're going to be filling in this outer area with paint number one. And so we're using the larger brush and you want to make sure that it's nice and damp before you put paint on it. So we're just filling in this whole section that surrounds the labia and the clitoral hood. For orange and pink people, we're going to be doing almost the same thing, except this area is going to be blocked off with two colors instead of just one color. So we're going to draw two guidelines starting approximately like one inch from the top. And we're just going to draw like these kind of wiggly lines that follow that geode shape down. And you can see that it kind of narrows towards the bottom and just connects with that orange that you already have there. So basically the pink section is a little thicker towards the top of the painting. And then as you get to the bottom, it's a little bit more like split in half. So it's kind of like two thirds of the width is pink towards the top. And then at the bottom, it's like 50, 50. And of course this doesn't have to be exact or anything, but it's just like a general guideline. Now for anyone who's doing a darker color scheme, so like the purple and teal, purple and dark turquoise, because your paints are on the darker side, you're definitely gonna need like two and maybe three layers of paint in this area to really get that color to be solid and filled in all the way. And it's really important that you let the paint dry in between layers, otherwise it'll just look really blotchy and it won't fully cover everything. So this part of the painting is really one of the only times you have to like just kind of wait around for the layers to dry. The rest of the painting will be bouncing back and forth between sections. So while we're working on one section, the other ones will be drying. So there won't be too much more waiting. But if you have like a hair dryer or a fan or something, that can help speed up the process if you don't feel like waiting too much. And for the orange and pink people, if you haven't already done this, you can go ahead and start filling in that orange color around the pink as well. When you're all finished painting the outer layer, you can then move into the center and start to widen that area a bit more. And as you can see, the shape of the center is kind of like a wiggly teardrop shape. So like the top is a little bit more narrow and then it gets a little bit wider as it goes down. So once that first layer is totally dry, then you can go back and do a second layer. And if you feel like you still need another layer after this one, there will be a time later on in this painting where you can go back and do that. That way you don't have to just wait around for too long and you can move on to the next section with everyone. All right, so now we're going to move to the center of our painting. 
So basically all we're going to do is fill in the areas that haven't been painted yet with a secondary color that we're going to make. So for everyone except for orange and pink, all you're going to do is make a lighter version of your number one paint. And the way you do that is you add a small amount of the number one paint to some white. So once you do that, just go ahead and start filling in that middle section. And in some of these video clips, I'm using the larger flat brush, but you're more than welcome to switch to the smaller flat brush for this part. It can be a little bit easier for like the edges and doing little details. So for those of you doing orange and pink, you're gonna be mixing a small amount of orange into your yellow and then adding a little bit of white to that as well. And it's really helpful if you turn your paintbrush sideways and use like the narrow side, that will help give you the smoothest lines and edges. And actually the majority of this painting, we're gonna be using the paintbrush on its side like that. And so when you paint over the clitoral hood, you can extend the shape all the way to the edge of your geode vulva shape. So you can paint over top of whatever lines you created at the top. So now is a great time to start defining the shape of the labia a bit more. So you can make it a little wider or longer or change the shape a bit. And something helpful that I like to do sometimes is I like to flip my painting over because it helps give me like a different perspective of the different shapes I'm creating. And it also can help with some of the brush strokes. Like if it's a little awkward trying to go around an edge towards the bottom of the canvas, if you just flip it over, it makes it a lot easier sometimes. If you still wanted to do another layer of paint in the outer section of your painting, now would be a good time to go ahead and do one real quick before we move on to the next part of the painting. All right, so we've got the foundation of our painting established and now we get to go in and do some of the fun stuff. So for a large portion of this painting, we're gonna be using this cool paintbrush technique. Basically, we're going to use our paintbrush to create a gradient by having two different colors on either side of the paintbrush. So when we do the stroke, the two colors will blend together as you move down the painting. So we're using the larger flat brush and paint number one and your white. Unless you're doing orange and pink, then you're going to be doing pink and white. For those of you doing purple and purple and teal, we will be adding the blue and the turquoise color to this painting later on. So for right now, we're just still using purple and white. The key to this technique is you want to make sure that your paintbrush is extra wet when you're applying the paint to the paintbrush. So dip one side of your paintbrush into the number one paint and you want to get a decent amount on this. So as you can see, I kind of stroke the paintbrush through it a little bit and then I flip it over and wipe off any little excess that was on the other side and then I just tap it into the white color just a little bit. You wanna have more dark than the white. So now we're gonna turn our paintbrush on its side and we want the white to be facing outwards and the purple inwards. And basically we're gonna follow along that darker shape that we created in the middle and you can kind of add a little bit more like curves to it as you go. So you can see as you push down in your paintbrush, it kind of creates a gradient between the two colors. And you can push your brush back and forth too. You don't have to just go in one direction. Sometimes you can smooth it out better if you kind of go back the other direction. So just kind of get a general gradient established and don't worry if it looks that good or anything. Um, we're going to come back to this section a little later after this part dries. Just make sure you keep this area smooth. So if you see like a little glob of, of paint that came off of your paintbrush, um, just be sure to kind of either smooth it out or use your finger or something to wipe it up. That way the area stays really smooth and it's easier to do these gradients over it. When you're finished with that, you can switch back to the smaller flat brush and we're going to create a dark line that follows around the shape that we just made. 
We're going to be doing a similar technique, but this time we're only putting paint on one side of the brush and no paint on the other side. So just get some of the number one paint on one side of your paintbrush, or the pink color if you're doing the orange and pink paint. And then you want to wipe off any excess on the other side of your brush. Then with the side with the paint on it facing outwards, you're going to take your brush and follow closely around that shape that you created with that gradient. So you want the side of your brush that doesn't have paint on it to be facing inward. And it's going to just barely touch that outside part of the gradient that you created. So of course we're going to come back and do more layers on top of this line, so don't worry too much if it's like a little blotchy or it's not that dark or anything. For the next part, we're going to create a wider gradient that extends from the outside of that darker line all the way to the edge of the labia. And the two colors that you'll have on either side of your brush will be like a medium tone and white. And if you're doing the orange and pink painting, your two colors will be an orangish yellowish color on one side and then white on the other side. So get some of that medium color on one side of your paintbrush and then you can flip it over and wipe off any excess and add a little white to the other side of your paintbrush. And then what you're going to do is you want the white paint to be facing outward. And since this is a wider gradient, as you move your brush up and down and back and forth, you want to slowly push the paint outwards all the way to the edge of the labia. And as you're blending out the gradient, you just want to make sure that you keep your brush facing the same direction um, as the gradient like the whole time. So basically always make sure that lighter color is on the outer side and then the, you know, the medium tone is on the other side. For those of you doing the lighter color schemes, like the light turquoise and pink, you're going to want to have actually a little bit more white paint on your brush instead of the medium tone. Since you have kind of lighter paints, um, you're going to want to draw out more of a brighter white color to kind of create more contrast. And sometimes it can just take a little while to get that white to really show through. So if you don't see a ton of contrast right away, like, you know, again, don't worry too much because we'll come back and do more layers with it. As you're blending out these layers, one important thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is keep blending the same spot too much and like applying too much paint to that area. So if your paint starts to feel a bit tacky or like has like a little more resistance when you're putting your brush through it, um, you want to just try to leave that section alone and not like keep trying to work it too much. Your paintbrush should glide like fairly smoothly. And if you have any spots in the center that need to be filled out a bit more, you can also um, use some of your darker color and fill that area in like this. All right, so we'll come back to this section again in a couple of minutes and do a second round of layers. But if you need a little extra time, now would be a good time to pause the video if you wanna keep working on this area. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next section. So for this next section, we're still going to be using the same smaller flat brush that we've been using. And we're going to paint two lines that are just going to kind of outline where the gradients are going to go. Just to give us a guideline. So you can get a little white paint on your brush and then approximately one inch from the top, start painting sort of a wiggly line that follows around your geode vulva. And I'm still using the paintbrush on its side, so I'm using like the narrow side to paint these lines. And if you're doing the orange and pink painting, your first line is actually going to sort of follow where the pink and the orange connect. And it's fine if you want to make the line a little more wavy um, and kind of cross over the colors a bit. 
And the second line will start about an inch down from that first line, and then it connects with it towards the bottom. Now that we have our guidelines established, we're going to switch to the larger paintbrush and we're going to be doing the same paintbrush technique where we have one side with the darker color and then the other side with the white. The orange and pink painting will be slightly different, so I'll show you that in just a second. And for those of you doing purple and teal, um, this first layer that we're going to do, we're just using the purple and white, but then later on we'll add in the teal color. So make sure your paintbrush is nice and damp, and then get a decent amount of that darker color on one side. Wipe off any excess on the other, and then um, tap it into the white paint. And for the first line, you want the white to be facing inward and the darker color outward. So starting at the top, you're just going to line your paintbrush up with that guideline and just follow it all the way around. So as you can see, I actually paint over top of the clitoral hood a little bit. Um, you have to just do that during this part so that the gradients line up really nicely and we'll just paint over top of that uh, towards the end. The only thing is you want to make sure when you do paint over top of it that you don't accidentally leave any like globs of paint or anything. So if it's like a lot of paint, you just want to wipe it off um, or smooth it out or something. For those of you doing orange and pink, your gradients are going to follow whatever base color you have in that section. Like that first line is going to be um, an orangish yellowish color and then the other one will be pink and white. So the orangish yellowish gradient actually has more than two colors. Like basically it goes from orange to yellow to like a whitish color. So we're going to do the same paintbrush technique but we're going to do it with three colors on the paintbrush and I'll show you how. Make sure your paintbrush is nice and damp, and then you can get orange on one side of your brush. And then get some yellow on the other side of your brush. And then you're going to just barely touch the tip of your paintbrush into the white on the same side as the yellow. Then with the yellow and white facing inward, you're going to just follow that guideline that you used, created earlier. And then the second line is going to be the exact same as the other one, except this time the white paint is going to be facing outward and the darker paint will be inward. One thing I found with this paintbrush technique is it seems to work best when you move your paintbrush fairly quickly. Like if you're not like overly cautious about it, like you kind of have to just go for it and um, not like overthink it too much. <laughs> It's kind of the same thing, like, if you wear eyeliner and you want to do, like, winged eyeliner, you can't let the eyeliner sense your fear. <laughs> it's kind of like the same thing. You just got to go for it and not worry too much, you know, because you can always paint over it again, and you can even wipe parts of it off, too, like, if you really don't like what you did. <laughs> so work with this area for a little bit, and, you know, again, if it starts to feel really tacky or the, you know, the paint isn't blending very well, just take a break from that section. We'll spend some more time here working on this section, and then we're going to go back and work on that inner section again and redo those layers.
So we've established the general structure and design of our painting, and now we get to go back through and touch up all the little details and add accent colors and stuff like that. So we're going to go back through in the same order that we did the first time. So starting um, in the center and then working our way out. And for the purple and purple and teal people, we're going to be adding the blue and teal now into your painting. So you can go ahead and get those colors out and put a little bit on your palette. So for the purple color schemes, um, what you want to do is get some dark purple on one side and then the blue or teal on the other side. And then you want to just lightly dip it into the white on the side where you have the blue or teal. Because um, we're going to be creating a gradient with kind of like three colors to do this part. So you can just follow right along where you did that previous gradient. And if you'd like, you could use the smaller flat brush and go back in to touch up details with this. So like you could work on different parts of this gradient. So like in this video, I did turquoise on one side and white on the other, and I'm just touching up that lighter part of the gradient and blending it into that purple more. We are going to do one new thing with that dark line that we established earlier. So basically, when you redefine that darker line, you're going to use two different colors this time around. So you're going to do the darker paint on one side of your brush and then a tiny bit of white on the other side. And you want that white to be facing inward so that it connects with that other white line that is created from the other gradient. So once you get that darker line defined a bit more, you can move on to the, the gradient that surrounds it. And if for some reason you're just like not getting one section right, it's like not working for you or whatever, you'll have time throughout this painting that you could come back and touch it up later after it dries. Sometimes I try to keep blending something and it just like won't work, so I just have to like move on for a little bit. <laughs> so just work on this inner area for a bit longer and then we're going to move back to the outer layers again. All right, so we are almost finished with the painting portion. So for most of you, all you're going to be doing is the same thing, just going back over the same gradients and lines that you created earlier. And you know, this time around, you're just going to be focusing on more of the details and just cleaning everything up. So for the purple and teal people, this is when we're going to add the teal color into the rest of the painting. And this time you're going to be using the larger brush. And you already did this earlier with the inner part of the gradient, so basically you're just going to do the same thing with these outer gradients. And in the video you can see that I'm using the technique where you do the three colors of paint to make the gradients. So I do purple on one side, teal on the other, and then just a tiny bit of white on the side of the teal. That works the best for me, but if you want to just do it you know, in smaller increments, that's perfectly fine too. You can just start with the purple and teal and then go back over it with just like teal and white and kind of, you know, you might want to use a smaller brush. You'll notice that the more you mix the purple in with the teal, it really kind of makes it look more bluish than like having more of a green tint. So if you rather keep more of that greenish color in the painting, um, what you want to do is try to not use as much purple when you're doing these gradients. And you may even want to go over top of some of the different areas while the purple is like dry or mostly dry. 
That way it's not blending in too much with the purple. But obviously some of you might like how it's kind of bluish as well. So you have kind of like a, a range that you can work with and do whatever you like. The larger brush is great for bigger areas and for making wider gradients, obviously, you know, because it's bigger um, and it holds more paint in it. So I've noticed that I can get things to look a lot more smooth if I can use the larger brush. So I try to use that as much as I can. And then if I really feel like I'm not getting it with the larger brush, then I use the smaller brush. And the very last thing that we're going to be painting is the clitoral hood. So you can just focus on all the other areas of the painting before you um, paint over that. And I'll have a little section for that later. So have fun just going back over these gradients. And remember, don't overwork it too much. Like if it starts to feel tacky or if, if the paint is just not blending well or if you're frustrated, just like let it dry and just try it again. So to do the hood, we're going to use the smaller paintbrush. And basically, we're going to start um, by defining those like outer edges. And you want to start with a color that is slightly darker, like a slightly darker medium color. And as you blend into the center, you're going to slowly add lighter and lighter paint. The idea is you want the center of that shape to be a lighter color and then the edges to be a slightly darker color, kind of like a shadow basically. And so that gives it a little bit of depth so it doesn't look too flat. And then just make sure that little center part where the clitoris little uh, glass piece is going to go, just make sure that is like filled in with the same color and kind of defined and everything.
All right, so you are done with the painting portion. Yay! <laughs> Um, you still want to hang on to your painting palette just for a little bit longer because we are going to add a tiny bit of paint to the adhesive for the glass pieces later. Your painting needs to be completely dry for this part because if any wet paint gets on the paint pen, it can just really mess it up. Before you open your paint pen, you want to shake it really well. And then after you open it up, you're going to push down on the tip of the paint pen and hold it there for a couple of seconds um, so that the white paint can start to flow down into the tip. Sometimes these paint pens can get caught on like a little bump on the canvas or something and some paint will splatter a little bit. Um, like the tips are very sensitive. So basically um, a way to prevent it from doing that is you want to make sure you hold your paint pen at an angle. You never want to hold it like up and down. I noticed that if I hold it at an angle, it doesn't like get caught on anything as easily. And then don't push down on it very hard at all. Like you want to just be really delicate with the paint. So we're going to start by tracing the outer edge of the labia. And I recommend having a clean, damp paper towel close by. That way, if it does splatter a little bit of paint, um, you can just easily wipe it up before it dries on your canvas. Next, we're going to trace along the lighter area of the outer gradients. When you're finished with those lines, we're going to move back into the center part and trace this white line that we created earlier with the gradients. Then we're going to draw a second wiggly line and you can kind of make it go back and forth between that other line that you just drew. When you're finished with those lines, um, feel free to go back and do any little final details with your brush. And then we're going to move on to adding the glass pieces. The adhesive for the glass pieces is in container number three. So you can go ahead and get that out. Using the small flat brush, we're going to scoop out this adhesive directly onto the canvas. And you're going to just use pretty much the entire jar. So right now the adhesive looks white, but when it's fully dry, it's clear. So it's really cool because when we add paint to this, it's going to show through the glass pieces really nicely. And then carefully place a little bit in that center part where the clitoris is going to go.
Now we're going to add a little bit of color to this. First, start off with whatever color is your main color for the center. So you just want to dab a little bit of this paint all throughout. Then get a lighter version of the color you were just using, or like something that's almost white, and then dab that throughout as well. And you want to even dab a little bit of that color on top of the dark color here and there um, because it creates a cool texture under the glass. Then after that I like to add a tiny bit more of the darker paint throughout. And I'm really just doing a small amount, it's not like a whole lot of paint. And when you're finished with that we're going to start adding the glass pieces. So we're going to start with the larger glass pieces first, and the easiest way to do this is you want to dump them out into a container so that you can kind of sift through them as you put them on your painting. So I made it so that the palette paper can come out of your box fairly easily, um, so you can just dump them in there if you'd like. There's no tape on the long side of the paper in the box, so you can just grab from that end and try to peel it out. So obviously, please be very careful with this glass. Um, I do my best to make sure that all of the pieces are dull, but there's still always a possibility that there could be some sharp pieces, so just move cautiously. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a piece of glass that you want to use for the clitoris. So we're going to start there. You just want to push down on it so that it's in very securely. And then you want to remove the excess that was pushed to the side. I use my fingers just because I have like better control over it when I just do that. Um, but if you don't want to get too messy, you can use a paper towel or maybe even a clean brush. But just be really careful doing it that way. And so now we're going to work our way from the bottom up, starting with sort of larger pieces. And so as we go up, the pieces will get a little bit smaller towards the top. Um, so the first round will be the larger pieces of glass, and then we'll go through and fill in the little in-between places with the more medium-sized ones. And then at the very end, we'll sprinkle the little pieces that are in the other little bag.
these smaller pieces of glass are more likely to be sharp, so please just be extra cautious with these as you sprinkle them on. I like to try to get as many as I can along the edges especially, so I gently try to push them into the edges a little bit more at the very end here, but this is more risky of getting like cut accidentally by doing this, so, um, but this isn't necessarily the safest thing to do with it, these glass pieces. So, um, you know, just be extra cautious if you want to try to push them into the sides, or you could use um, like a clean dry brush or like a paper towel to kind of push them in. Um, I just, I work with this glass like all the time, so I've gotten a little bit more used to like working with it, um, um, but it still cuts me sometimes, <laughs> so I just don't really have the patience to do the other route. So we've made it to the final step. So if you have the time and patience, it is easiest to apply this gold paint when the adhesive is fully dry, but it is still possible to do while it's wet. You just have to go a little bit slower and just be cautious not to like push the, the adhesive around too much when you're applying the metallic paint. Now, I know I've already said this and I have warnings in the instructions, but just to be very clear, um, be very cautious with this paint. This is oil-based paint, so the fumes can be harmful if you're not in a well-ventilated area. You don't want this to be near kids or your pets or anything. Um, make sure you don't eat or drink while you're using it, just in case you get some on your hands. You don't want to ingest it by accident. Um, and it is flammable, so please don't smoke or anything near it while you're using it. So we're going to use that paintbrush that we set aside earlier um, with this paint. and. When you open up the paint, it's going to look really weird because it, it kind of separates from the oil, so you want to give it a really good stir. Also, it is a total pain if some of it spills on your painting. So um, I say this not to cause a bunch of anxiety, but to just let you guys know to be extra cautious with this paint. And I have a few tips on how you can be extra cautious with this um, to prevent any spills and stuff like that. So the main way that I prevent any spills is I hold the little cup of paint right next to the hand that I'm using to paint with. That way I'm not traveling very far with my paintbrush um, and not going to accidentally drip it on anything. So it's just like right there with me the whole time. And if you'd like to be even more cautious, you can even cover part of your painting with uh, like some paper towels or paper or something like that. So we're going to start by outlining the edges of our geode vulva. And I'm still using the paintbrush um, sideways too. I'm not really using the wider side as much as I apply this. And I also make some of these lines a little more narrow or a little wider as I go around. I notice that it kind of makes it look a little bit more like a geode if I do it that way.
And then after that, I do a thin squiggly line around the edge. And if you'd like to use the other little pointer brush that came with your kit, you're welcome to try that one out. Um, I prefer to still use the smallest flat brush that we've been using and just use it on its side. I'm able to get the line a little bit more smoothly and it holds more paint as I go. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Now we're going to add the gold around the crystals. So this is the part you want to be a little extra cautious with because you don't want to accidentally like push that adhesive around and then get it stuck on other parts of the painting. So basically you just want to lightly dab the gold metallic paint around these edges. And then if you'd like, you can add some gold on the glass pieces themselves. And once you're finished with this area, your painting is totally complete. I hope you enjoyed the process and I hope you're really happy with what you've done. Thank you so much for wanting to do this and I'm really excited to see any paintings if if anyone wants to share what you've done, I, that would make me so happy. <laughs> so if you do share on social media, please definitely tag me. Um, I'm on TikTok and Instagram and both places are Renee Christine Studios. And of course, if you don't want to share publicly or anything, but you still want to share it with me, you're more than welcome to send me a private message uh, with a picture or something too, if you'd like. So thank you so much. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or if you're not satisfied with any part of this or whatever. Um, I'm always trying to improve everything I do and I'd love to hear any feedback that you have. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whatever it is <laughs> and enjoy your brand new painting. <laughs>